it's one thing to be a kid in Disney. Mm. It's completely different to bring your kids to mm. Disney. Experiencing Disney is so fun, but watching your kids as a mom, oh, oh my, my gosh, gosh, it's just Disney on a whole other level. Oh. So what I want you to remember as a mom is you know yourself and your kids better than anyone. Right. And this is super important because like I said, there's tons of Disney blogs, YouTube videos, podcasts, and they're all great. Mm -hmm. But I don't want you to get stressed about this. Hi, welcome to another episode of Mom Does It All. If you're looking for encouragement, empowerment, and uplifting in motherhood and mompreneurship, this is a show for you. I'm your host, Marta Spurk triplet mom, certified success coach, and all things motivation extraordinaire. In this episode, I talked to mama of four, Disney fanatic, and Disney podcaster, Kirsten Keller. She shares several tips on how to plan your Disney vacation as stress-free as possible to create an amazing experience for you and your kids. Let's dive in. Hi, Kirsten. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I cannot wait. I could talk about Disney all day, every day. Oh my gosh. I am so excited to have come across you and your podcast. It's just such a different um, concept and idea. And I love it. And especially for me, being a mom to triplets, I know I will need all the help I can get to plan an amazing, memorable trip to Disney. And before we talk about tips and all of the things, I just want you to tell us how you got so into Disney and, you know, working with this now and starting your podcast. I just want to know about your story. Yeah, for sure. So I have always loved Disney. Um, I don't really know where that love came from. My first trip was when I was 12 and it was just, um, you know, as a kid, of course, I loved it, loved the movies, but then, uh, I also developed this massive love of podcasts. Ooh. I just, the commute is so much better. I, I listen to podcasts. I don't even listen to the radio anymore. Wow. So for a long time, I wanted to connect those two somehow, but I thought, oh my gosh, I live in Minnesota. You know, I can't stay up to date and how can I compete yeah. with the big guys? And one day I was sitting in my car and I was listening to a new Disney podcast and she was basically talking about a restaurant. This is going to get kind of confusing, but just bear with me because okay, it, no it makes sense. So she was talking about a restaurant that my another podcast that I listened to, they were like, it's terrible. You know, don't go. We don't recommend it. And it hit me that if you listen to a Disney podcast, which is great. And I totally recommend it. But you're only going to get the point of view of the podcaster. Right. And it was this weird, uh, it's kind of silly when I say it out loud, but I realized if you are someone who's planning your first trip, mm -hmm. you it's, it's so hard to kind of plan and you get, there's so many different opinions and right. you don't know what to believe. So if you listen to trip reports from other families, right. other moms coming back from their trips, sharing their experiences, then that can, that can help you make decisions for your own family. Right. Oh yeah. And it's so much better than just reading the reviews from somebody that you don't even know, as opposed to having a whole interview of them talking about their background and what they did. And it's just a lot more fun at least for me, listening than reading anyway. So that's a genius idea. I love that so much. And so tell me, what have you learned from doing uh, this podcast so far? And of course, I want you to, to go through uh, the tips and all of that, but I just, I'm just so fascinated by this idea. Yeah. So I'm actually really glad you asked that because part of what I wanted to, the other really reason that I started it and what I thought I could bring, like I said, are these different opinions. Right. And Something that I read, if you are planning a Disney vacation, a really great planning tool are Facebook groups. Okay. Um, because for the same reason, you can really, it's like crowdsourcing advice. Right. right? Yes. And, and so one other thing that I thought of, I see all the time is where moms say, I have a six-year-old. Will this ride and fill in the blank right. be good for my six-year-old? Oh. Okay. Well, that ride might be awesome for your six-year-old and might be 
terrifying for my six-year-old. Oh. Right? Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what I have learned. And so what I'm so excited about kind of sharing with everybody, mm-hmm. because for example, I just interviewed a mom whose daughter was barely tall enough to ride like the huh. scariest of rides. Oh my gosh. And she loved them all. Like she loved Space Mountain. Wow. She was just, she loved them. Mm. And she was four. Oh, oh my gosh. I okay. know. She was four. And I just thought, okay, my son who is turning four this month would be terrified. Right. He wouldn't even want to look at those rides. Oh, and wow. so, yeah, so that's what I've learned. It's just, mm-hmm. it's so fun. Like you said, it's Disney magic, whether you're planning a trip, um, you can kind of have that Disney magic in your day and right. escape as a mom. You can kind of just like relax and let the stress go and escape to Disney World, you know, right. listening to the podcast. Yeah. Can, yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, that's so exciting. And that's so true. And that goes back to everything that I always talk about on the podcast, even um, that every family is so different. Every mom is different. Every child is different. So even though you can take experiences and all of that, you have to take into consideration your own family and get to know your kids, right? Get to know what they love and what would work out. And that's just brilliant. So I do want to get into the tips because of course I want to talk about more deep stuff. Like we were, we were talking before we, we started recording, um, how going to Disney is just reliving your childhood. Um, especially if you went to Disney as a child and you're already obsessed with Disney, which is my case. And I, I feel like so many moms, like our generations, uh, we we're, we're used to this. Right. And so I do want to talk about that, but what are your, like your top tips? And then I do want you to kind of, I, I want to take advantage of you here and give me some tips for, for triplets. If you have any uh, off the top of your head, uh, but just go ahead. What, what are some of the top ones that you always tell people like, no, this is a must do, or you need to incorporate this into your planning or whatever. Yeah, Marta. And before I get started, I just wanted to reiterate what you said, because I just interviewed a parenting coach and her advice was brilliant. But my favorite quote Mm -hmm. that she said in this whole episode was, it's one thing to be a kid in Disney. Mm -hmm. It's completely different to bring your kids to Mm -hmm. Disney. And it hearing her say that, like, I, I know that, but hearing her say it was just like this aha, I don't know, it was a moment of brilliance. And it's so true. Experiencing Disney is so fun, but watching your kids as a mom, oh oh my my gosh, gosh. it's just Disney on a whole other level. I can't even imagine. So excited for it. (laughs) It's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, so The other thing that you said, which is really encompassing my tips in general, is that every family is different. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to remember as a mom is you know yourself and your kids better than anyone. Right. And this is super important because like I said, there's tons of Disney blogs, YouTube videos, podcasts, and they're all great. Mm -hmm. But I don't want you to get stressed about this, Uh right? So just kind of take a moment to trust yourself. Okay. And so that's kind of just grounding that I want to remind everyone of. Mm-hmm. A few tactical things. So okay. something that I didn't know when I first started going to Disney is really a lot about travel agents. Now, I'm not a travel agent mm-hmm. and I'm not saying you need one, okay. but I want... When you think about yourself, like some some of you, some of you moms out there, you love spreadsheets. You like them color coded. Right. That's know? not me, but I know yeah. many of them. My, that's exactly. my husband. Yeah, exactly. The whole shebang, right? Mm-hmm. And there's others of you. Either you're maybe you know you're a working mom and you're too busy, or you're just maybe it's too overwhelming or whatever it is, and you would feel more comfortable with a travel agent. Whatever the case, I really want you to know that travel agents cost the same as booking the trip yourself directly through Disney. Hmm. And I didn't realize this. And so whether you just want kind of like a partner to walk with you and make sure they're like, hold, you got your back, especially right. if it's your first trip. Yeah. Or you're too overwhelmed and you want to hand the whole thing over. Right. Either way, I want you to at least consider a travel agent um, or at least know that it doesn't cost you extra because okay. they are... They re- receive their compensation from Disney. Oh, so that's mm-hmm. really great because I would have not, not known that. Exactly. Nobody, and you, you think, okay, a Disney vacation, I'm just going to be honest, 
it is not inexpensive, right? Right. Yeah. And and so if that one, if that can take some stress off you, right, then that's a huge win. So right. I just want to make sure everybody knows that up front. Okay. No, that's great advice. Good. Second of all, know your dates. So these first two things kind of go hand in hand. Okay. But so know your dates and there's two specific dates I'm talking about. Mm. So once you plan your vacation, you know, whether it's when kids are out of school or if you have those little kiddos, maybe you're basing it off of weather, whatever it is. Right. So you've planned your vacation, you got it locked in. There's two really important dates you need to know about. You can make dining reservations 180 days in advance. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Of your first day. Hmm. Now, this is super important because there are reservations and and it goes further than that. They hmm. open at 6 a.m. Eastern. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. So I am not kidding. Like, people are always so surprised to hear this. Hmm. People will set their alarms and be up and ready to hit the button at 6 a.m. Oh, my Eastern. gosh. Yes. So know your dates. Oh, because wow. there are reservations that you really truly, like, for example, Cinderella's Royal Table, which is okay. the restaurant in Cinderella's Castle. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, which is... Oh, I can't even imagine. <laughs> Just taking my little girl there. It's like, right? oh my gosh, I want to do it. <laughs> I know, <laughs> so. right? right? You're like, you're walking up the stairs in Cinderella's castle. It oh, is just wow. like, unlike any other experience. Right. And you really, truly, it's, I'm not going to say it's impossible, mm-hmm. but it's very difficult to right. get those reservations if you're not on the ball. Mm-hmm. So if you know that that's not you, then that's another reason to get a travel agent. Again, I have, okay. I'm not one. So please, I don't want this to sound like, you know, a sales pitch. It's right. not. It's not. I really am trying to just give you it. Right. Because it's hard yeah. if you don't plan ahead. And if you don't want to have the trouble of planning that far ahead, because there's so many moving parts, exactly. you might as well have somebody help you with that. Unless you're like, oh, I'm going to try it last minute and then it's not going to work and you're not going to be disappointed, but... That's, yeah. That's and so that's why, right. And so that's why I want you to know your dates. And so it's not that you can't get great reservations, mm-hmm. even up right until your trip. You totally right. can, but all of these little things will help you have just, you know, a better time. You, yeah. Help you make the most out of it, especially. Totally. Yeah. If this is your first time. The other date that you need to know is your fast pass. Okay. Opening date. Mm. So I won't get into it, but um, if you're not familiar with fast passes, this is basically like reserving your ride right. before you go. Mm-hmm. So again, these are all Walt Disney World. Disneyland is a little bit different, okay. but these are Walt Disney World um, tips. So Disneyland doesn't require quite so rigorous planning. Okay. Um, so that's why I'm just kind of focusing on worlds. But okay. um, so if you're staying on property, you can book your fast passes 60 days in advance wow. of your trip. Okay. And if you're staying off property, you can book your fast passes 30 days in advance. Okay. So you have some more advantages there if you actually pick their hotels and stuff. That's exactly right. Okay. Exactly. And you know, if you are going if you really want to ride, you know, like Avatar Flight of Passage or your little kids love Toy Story. Mm-hmm. Toy Story Land just opened last year nice. and it is still massively popular. We're talking 2 to 3 hour waits. Oh my gosh. Yeah, a lot of times on Slinky Dog Dash. So you definitely are it's going to be, you know, to your advantage to be on top of those dates. Yes. Oh goodness. <laughs> That's great tips and crazy to even think about. Two hours, three hours, that's nuts. Right. And as, as a mom, especially of little, little ones, if you're bringing little ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just. You're just going to have to like pass if you're not prepared. Cause, well, that's I, just it. Yeah. Because I, I took my kids for the first time to something not Disney material at all. It was like a, a Jurassic Quest. It's like a dinosaur mm. exhibit. Yeah. And it was the very first time doing anything like that. And it's, it's, it's stressful because we were outnumbered to begin with, right? Mm-hmm. Two of us. And uh, then they don't really understand waiting in line. And to wait for two hours, that's impossible. That's not going to happen. So it's definitely something you need to look uh, into ahead. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's either you're going to have to skip that ride altogether. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
or be yeah. prepared or be prepared. Totally. Mm-hmm. What else? What, what other tips do you have for us? Yeah. So on that same topic of be prepared. So again, when I'm saying know yourself and so I would just recommend if you are a working mom, start listening to Disney podcasts on your commute. You don't right. have to like become an expert, mm-hmm. but listening to different tips, there's some great ones out there. Okay. Um, that could be just a really good way to kind of get, so, especially if you haven't gone since you were a kid. Right. right. It's so different. Yeah. yeah. Just like you, it's mm-hmm. so different. And so um, that is going to help watching YouTube videos. Okay. Disney food blog is awesome. Um, so the more prepared you are, know your kids. So okay. specifically, I know this is really helpful if you have special needs kids. Mm. Sometimes it will make a massive difference if they're able to watch YouTube videos of the rides. Oh, or yeah, have you can them watch, watch it too to get prepared. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. No, so, you know, some people want to surprise their kids. Right. Totally, yeah. Totally fine. But for other kids, the surprise would ruin or just make the whole situation right. really difficult. Not the same experience if they knew what to expect. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So point of view you can actually watch rides oh, on youtube wow. now oh my gosh this is amazing i had no idea there's everything these days online you just have to think just about it <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly just know it's there oh wow. so, mm-hmm. so that can be really helpful and then if you are the more you do just try to do a little bit of research the okay. better so okay. for example they just announced changes starting May 1st to your stroller size. Okay. So this is super important. If you are planning a Disney vacation and you're going May 1st, 2019 or later. So the stroller, I think I have it here. They can't be um, wider than 31 inches hmm. or longer than 52 inches. Oh, dear. And so I don't expect you to memorize that. But what I do want you to do is Mm -hmm. to research it before you go. Because, for example, if you have more than one kiddo like you, I have a um, City Select. What is it? Mm -hmm. Baby Jogger City, which I love. I used to have that one, too. Yeah. It's great. It's great. Mm -hmm. A lot. Not all of them, but a lot of them are now too long. Oh, Okay. Mm, and so, so you have if to you be mindful of that, it's just like traveling on the airplane. You exactly. have to research the measurements and everything. Yeah. Imagine okay. walking up to the parks and your strollers too long. Oh my God. What do you do? Oh, I can't even imagine. Oh gosh. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's something for me to even think about because usually, and I don't know how it's going to be now that they're growing, but when we go to the zoo and open spaces like that, we use this triplet jogger. And of course it's ridiculously wide because it's exactly it. Um, and that's so much easier because then I just push. I was using the wagon before, but it's a lot harder because then you have to pull. Exactly. That's something that I would definitely have to look into because I would probably have to use the wagon then. Well, I don't think you can use wagons either. No? Okay. No. So I think you're probably going to have to get two strollers two then. Two strollers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Yeah, it's tricky. So Very I know. tricky. Okay. So just inve- the more you put in, it's almost like physical, of like a, you're running a marathon. Yeah. The more you put into it ahead of time, the better yes. your experience. Yes. Is be. yeah. Oh my gosh, for sure. Cause I mean, if you get there and you run into something like this, that's a total damper in the exactly. whole trip already. Okay. Exactly. It's starting it off on the wrong foot. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Which is the last thing you want. So mm-hmm. the last thing I just wanted to talk about are a few kind of just little tips, um, that you might not, you're, that you might not know about, especially if this is your first time right. um, that can help you as a mom with little kids. Okay. So if you are going, I don't even want to say in the summer, if you are going between say, Try not to. I know what you're saying. Try not to. <laughs> exactly. Okay. If you are going, say like May-ish uh, to October even, okay. uh, Orlando, I know this is going to sound silly, but Orlando is hot. Right. Gonna, like, yes, I know it's hot, but More no, than it you is. Would think. That's what, that's what we're saying. <laughs> More than you would imagine. Exactly. It is like okay. surface of the sun hot. Oh my God. This. And so, yeah. So, but I know a lot of families, if their kids are in school or if they're a teacher. Right. It's the only way. It's the only way. Mm-hmm. So, so not only do you want to be prepared, you know, to make sure you're kids have are hydrated or you might have like a towel or whatever for them to stay cool or fans 
The, something that people don't know is that Disney will give you free water. I know that sounds kind oh. of silly, but... I wouldn't know that. Oh my gosh. So a water, I think, is $4. Okay. Imagine you, like you, you have a family yeah. of five. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's like a whole... Much water. <laughs> exactly. It's like a whole budget right there just for water. Yeah. So any counter service or um, kiosk that has a fountain that sells like fountain soda... Mm-hmm. We'll give free water. And so what we always... Refill, if you have like a container, you can refill it. Okay. Exactly. Oh, okay. Awesome. So what we do is we bring our water bottles. And so then... Because, you know, usually you just get a little cup. If you bring your water bottles and then you can refill that, that way, if you're waiting in a a longer line, Mm -hmm. you can still stay hydrated and stay cool Mm -hmm. while you're waiting in line. Okay. Oh, that's great advice, especially for the... For the warm months, because I, when I was telling you about my experience, we actually decided to go in January when I went. I've I've gone to the Disneyland as well, and that was when I was older. But of course, it's different. I've only been to Disney World once, and uh, it was when I was ten in 1997, many moons ago. <laughs> and I'm sure, oh my gosh, so much has changed since then. That's why I'm so looking forward to going back, especially now with my kids. And we did go in January because of not not being as hot, not being as full. It was cheaper. Definitely. I did have to miss school at the time, um, with, you know, I was living in Brazil and everything, but it was a very good experience. We didn't have that much trouble with lines. I did go with the travel guide. So that was good. Cause my parents l- like that stuff to just have someone take you and tell you where to go. Um, I don't think my husband would want to go with a group. I don't know. We haven't gone that far yet because he's, we haven't even gone back to Brazil because they're too small. Uh, so they haven't been back. They were born there, but then we, we, we moved back and they haven't gone back. And we're thinking once they're five or so, they can handle a longer trip and, and things like that. So that's what, what we're thinking for Disney even after they're five. So we have like a couple of years still. And I can start listening to the podcast to plan. <laughs> that's right. You'll be, you'll be ready to go yes. when, when they're old enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The two other just really minor things on that note, like you said, five. So actually it's, so basically Disney world is a lot of walking. Okay. And when I say a lot of walking, I mean on average 10 to 12 miles a day. Oh my goodness. Right. So if you aren't prepared for that, you, it could be, it could be quite a surprise. Mm -hmm. The other thing with, for example, what you're saying with five-year-olds is a lot of times what you'll find as a parent is that you might want a stroller. This is kind of, this is going back to the stroller. You might actually want a stroller for a little bit older kiddo that you might not, like say you're going to the mall, you wouldn't use a stroller. Right, right. But you might be surprised. A lot of times four, five, six-year-olds Parents will still want strollers for them. Mm -hmm. It's not uncommon. And I mean, I think, you know, 10 to 12 miles on those little tiny legs. Right. It's too much. It's too much. And so just to kind of be prepared and maybe you won't need it, but maybe you will. And so just, just think about it before you go. Yeah. Having something and of course, keeping in mind their guidelines and what they allow Mm -hmm. so that they don't have to walk because yeah, it's, even like going places with them sometimes, I just, they, they can't, and because they get distracted, you don't want to lose a child. It's, it's better to have them be contained in one space. So a stroller is definitely a good idea. Yeah, that's true. It's safer. The, the, the crowds, yeah, yes. the crowds are crazy. And so, yeah, those little tiny kiddos holding under their little hands. I yeah. know. Yeah. No, oh, I, I this makes me think back to my trips. I remember once uh, I was always holding my mom's arm when I was walking. And I think at one point, I think it was in Universal Studios, I grabbed this other lady's arm that wasn't my mom. And then I was just walking and I looked up and I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh no. Yeah. It's just, yeah. So definitely you want to make sure you don't lose your kid when you go to Disney. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So, well, and going back to the memory thing, because even to what you said about the parent coach saying that going to Disney is one thing, taking your child to Disney is a completely different experience. And this goes back to a lot of the things that I have been learning and even talking about with my clients and on the podcast about how, when you become a mom, you really go through your childhood again. You, you really relive those moments. You, you think about what your mom used to do to you and you know, what you want to 
pass on to your kids and the feelings that you had growing up. And it kind of makes you revive that inner child in a sense. And th- thinking about Disney, it's just, it's, it's the same, right? It's, it's wanting them to have this even more amazing experience than you would have. And it's funny because I was just telling you that um, I'm, I'm reading this book about self-love and the author encourages you to find a picture of you uh, when you were little that, you know, you were happy and remembering that essence before adulthood happened and teenagehood happened. And the picture that I found that my mom sent me was a picture of me in Disney, which is crazy. Um, and it, it, it's, can you tell us more about this magic and just the feelings, especially you, how many times have you gone to Disney? Tell me about your family and your kids. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really fun. Thanks for asking. And the, the quin it's, I feel like it's not a coincidence that the timing no, he sent no. you this picture. Yeah. So perfect. I just love that. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, thanks for asking. So I actually have four kids. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And again, like I said, we, I went myself the first time when I was 12. So a little bit older. Okay. So, um, And that kind of speaks to, you see all the time in these Facebook groups, like what is the right age to go um, or to bring your kids for the first time? And I strongly believe there is no right age. Okay. So whether it's, yeah, whether it's a tiny baby, they're not going to remember it, but you are going to remember it. Right. Really fun to see because the they're just completely amazed by everything they see. So that's really yeah. fun. If they're you know five, six, seven, that's when they're really getting a better understanding right. of it. Yeah. If they're older, like it's still their first time. Right. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't great. matter. Yeah. It doesn't. I think a lot of moms or parents get really kind of worried about that. Mm-hmm. Whatever's right for your family is the perfect first eight time okay. for your kids to go. Yeah. Um. So. I don't even remember how many times I've gone. I think oh my gosh. Nine, it's not a lot. It's not like these people that go every year. By okay. any means. <laughs> I think we're up to maybe six or eight. Okay. That's amazing. It's great. So, but I haven't gone with all four kids yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's, so. Is that in the works? Are you planning? Oh, hopefully. So if you haven't heard, which... If you are researching Disney at all, then you would know this, but Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, which is Star Wars Land, is opening in Hollywood Studios this fall. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. So that alone, if you're a Star Wars fan, is great. And then also it's almost the 50th anniversary. So that's going to be really fun as well in the parks. So I'm kind of thinking next in the next few years. But again, I was thinking four and six. And again, this is just my age okay. for my youngest to, mm-hmm. uh, to be. So we haven't gone um, quite yet. But just in general, I just think that Disney is a place... The Part of why I love it so much is that it's really truly a place to escape the outside world. Right. So if you're staying on property, this is especially true. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you people call it the Disney bubble. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it's so true. You can just kind of like enjoy your family. Right. right? You know, it's just, it's just, you don't have emails. You don't have, it's just, it's just you and your kids. um, And you can really just, it's like quality time times 10. Yeah. So, which which I think is great for vacations in general. Totally. Um, But yeah, so with Disney and you can just be silly with them and, Mm -hmm. and like you said, just be a kid and enjoy the experience fully. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really why I just, I love it so much. And Disney, the, um, if you like food, like I love good food. I love good restaurants and Disney brings some really fun dining experience, Mm -hmm. which I think is really fun. So any age, really adults, kids, it's just, I don't know. It's just a great place for everybody. Yeah. Oh, totally. There's just something for, for anyone. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) To find. Awesome. Well, how can we find you and more tips? Um, whatever it is that you have yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I would absolutely love if you are planning a Disney vacation or, you know, just want to escape into a little Disney magic in your day. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. It's called Report the Magic. Nice. Um, you can find us on Instagram at Report the Magic. And that's where you're always going to get new episode updates. Um, and so that I would love for you to connect with me if you have 
any questions at all. Um, I'm, I'm not going to claim to be, you know, the end all be all expert on everything, but right. um, <laughs> please reach out to me. I'm happy to help in any way I can. Yes. Oh, well, thank you so much, Kirsten. This was great. I loved our conversation and all the tips and I'll definitely be coming back to you when we start yes. planning. But yes, I will take, ready to go. Yes, but I'll take, take you up on your advice to start listening and start planning ahead. Not yeah. just like a month before. No, exactly. no, no. <laughs> Please don't do that. Yeah, yes. for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. How cool was that? So many great tips and it got me even more anxious to take my kids to Disney. And how about you? Have you taken your kids to Disney yet? I'd love to hear from you. If you love this episode, don't forget to share it on social media and tag us. Connect with Kirsten and me on Instagram and let us know your thoughts. Until next time. Bye.